Welcome to YouTube and today we are going to continue with uh, the advantages and disadvantages of client and server architecture. Uh, in the past video we talked about the client and server architecture. We understood the one who is making the request is always going to be a client and the one who is helping you out or the one who is responding you is going to be a server. And as promised in the last video that I will show you you know uh, how can we you know act as a client and server in you know uh, the torrent system I have a live demo so uh, over here you can see this is me the India in between and you can see there are different countries you know from where I'm taking the data so you see you know all the arrows are coming towards me where it shows that I'm gathering the file at the very same time you can see this arrow is going towards him it's like you know he is you know taking the data from me so you get it right so you can see the I believe this is Netherlands this is what Filipinos this is Zabakistan I believe this is Mexico and this is Netherlands so you see right the data is coming in towards me and at the very same time I'm also sending the data out to others right so it depends right but how this whole thing works we are going to discuss in great detail right <clears throat> so now let's move on to you know the advantages and disadvantages of uh, the the uh, the client and server architecture first advantage is as you can see uh, it's a centralized system now why would I say it's a centralized system because you can see this is a server right and a lot of people are connected to this server okay so all the data you need or you're requesting is present on the server right so this whole thing is completely centralized everything what you want is present and on this server and when I'm showing you peer-to-peer -peer, all these guys have the different set of copies of data and I'm taking the data from them or or I might say like I am giving them the data based on their needs right so this is the centralized system everything is in the same place accessibility now these servers uh, mostly need some sort of a configuration so this servers needs to be you know you cannot go you know in the physical store and you know configure those things but these th uh, these servers has a kind of an accessibility like you know you can access these servers remotely and you can configure certain things the way you want okay so this is a good part next thing is backup and recovery is possible let's say for certain reasons what happens is like you know as we all know this is a centralized system everything is dependent on this server so the chances are the system may go down for certain reasons like uh, some you can imagine like you know any reason so in most of the cases what happens is you know these servers are smart servers they are programmed in such a way to take a backup on the regular basis okay so if let's say today the, uh, the server has gone down so it is very much possible for the IT guy you know the one who is managing this server who can back this up with the whole data which uh, I assume I mean we can assume few data loss will be there but the data recovery is quite possible over here right and the security is pretty much awesome over here as compared to you know the peer-to-peer -peer network security in terms of like you know granting access to certain number of users certain uh, level of permissions and rules there are things they can do some of them have read write and different level of an access so pretty uh, that is also good so th this is uh, I can say a good side of you know the client and server architecture now let's get down to the darker side on the darker side you can see this architecture actually fails when it fails let's say uh, you have a you're downloading a big movie from a specific server not using the torrent uh, there's a simple server and from which uh, you're downloading a big movie for certain reason you know uh, it was like 2 GB in the size and 1 GB download was completed and for certain reason the server has gone down I mean server has not responding you so what just happened your complete download has been wasted right so that's the biggest problem like you know you cannot uh, rely when you have such a big files on their system right on the server now second thing is congestion congestion means uh, like you know uh, uh, let's say if I'm downloading a file 
from the server and at the very same time you know a thousand of people are making a hits on the server so obviously what's gonna happen is my download speed is gonna get I mean very low even if my you know uh, broadband provider is providing me a very good good speed but still I will feel like you know why I'm having such a hard time downloading this file because there are a lot of people are you know uh, uh, doing the same thing what you're doing right now then uh, this architecture is not uh, like I explained is not robust as you know peer to peer because if the server goes down you cannot do anything you just finished right for the moment then uh, there is no support of you know like pause and resume download is available I mean these days you know uh, when you download certain things you have you know the pause and resume for a certain limit of time but afterwards uh, you know after a few days uh, if you try to resume you lose your connectivity but in case of you know torrents uh, let's say if I have stopped my download for a month and if I resume it after a month it will pick up and it will resume the same thing I'll not be losing any data or anything it will fit all the pieces together right and to manage the you know the this uh, the single server you might need a IT guy you know for a support in case of like you know peer-to-peer -peer, you don't need much so I had one more diagram was I just wanted to explain you know this was the diagram where server is going down for some reasons but I didn't show you uh, I actually forgot so now I believe uh, you understood the good side and bad side of client and server architecture right so now it's up to you completely that what architecture you want to use based on your need so like in past this architecture has certain flow flaws in the system so that's why they came up came up with this you know peer-to-peer -peer architecture where you know uh, people you know can be like this diagrammatically you know they sit in a network like this okay and then they can you know accept the things from different people or they can share their things to different people based on their needs right so this is a peer-to-peer -peer architecture and we are going to discuss uh, about this you know in the next video so I hope this helps and if it helps then guys please subscribe to my channel which is right here Share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching this. Good night and take care.